The Alembic. Disclaimer. The information presented in this video is for educational purposes only. Introduction. The Alembic, sometimes called the Pelican for its bird-like appearance, is a quintessential instrument in alchemy and chemistry. The device is used for distillation, and its invention has changed the course of human history. The name Alembic originates with the Greek word for still or head, and was later adopted into Arabic, so the word al-ambic means the still. Distillation can be performed on various substances, both solid and liquid, although the historical device shown later in this video is designed for lower temperature distillation of non-corrosive liquids such as water, alcohol, or plant oils. Such a device was a key component in producing plant medicine, as alcohol was and still is one of the most useful substances for extracting medicine from plants. For practicing alchemists, making medicines is often referred to as the quote-unquote lesser work, whereas the quote greater work is of a more spiritual nature for self-improvement. Antique Alembic The device shown in this video appears to be an antique pot still intended for the distillation of spirits. It bears a resemblance to the alchemical pelican, the modern-day version of which is made of glass and has hollow glass tubes as arms, allowing for the circulation of vapors within the vessel. The device has three main pieces. The primary vessel is to be filled with water or oil via a spout to prevent burning of the material to be distilled, a.k.a. a double boiler system. Notice it has a vase-like bulge shape to allow for the water displacement when the secondary pot is set in place. This is an excellent design. Copper handles are riveted to the main vessel, giving it a winged bird-like appearance, similar to the modern-day glass pelican in its shape. The primary vessel is of hammered copper and is, quote, tinned on the inside with solder consisting of lead and tin. The secondary vessel is where the material to be distilled is added, typically a fermented beverage or mash. The secondary vessel is also made of copper and has some corrosion and some soldered patches from various times in history. The third item consists of the pelican head. Each of the three items nest in each other, forming a seal that is good enough for most distillation processes. A triangle-shaped tick mark was placed at the front of the vessel for proper nesting of the components. The third component consists of the distillation head and spout. It uh, has that bird-like appearance, and the volume of the head helps with the cooling and condensing of vapors and the circulation of vapors, which is also called reflux. Dovetail brace connections, which are typically uh, used in devices prior to the 1900s when other fabrication techniques became available. It has a threaded top port for either a thermometer or some other uh, vertical equipment extension. The threads are straight thread and are not tapered, such as British pipe uh, standard pipe thread or national standard pipe thread, NPT, both of which were invented around the 1850s. So based on these observations, it's possible that the device was crafted before 1850. Otherwise, it is a damn good replica. Many of the dimensions appear to be in centimeters rather than inches. It's possible that it was crafted in Europe. It is of most excellent craftsmanship and is made of copper, brass, tin, and lead. The solder tested positive for lead, and it is likely a blend of 60% tin and 40% lead. The lead is an issue for human consumption, and an experimental test run found that lead does in fact transfer from the solder to a distillate product. This is unfortunate but predictable as the subject of distillation often contains vegetable or fruit acids and traces of acetic acid or vinegar from a fermentation process. The combination of lead with vinegar creates lead acetate, which imparts a sweet, astringent, fruit-like aroma and flavor to the product. It was for this reason that the Romans put wine in lead containers, as the wine would age, any vinegar produced would create lead acetate and actually make the wine get sweeter with age. Indeed, it is a deceptive phenomenon, as no amount of lead is safe for human consumption. 
and yet it may taste pleasant. The body can remove lead via the kidneys over time, but it is generally detrimental to human health. In alchemical lore, lead is associated with Saturn, the bringer of age. Lead has shaped human consciousness at various times throughout history. It is, unfortunately, in our food, because in recent history it was spread everywhere from the burning of leaded gasoline as well as lead shot in hunting uh, birds and lead sinkers in fishing. It is likely that the mental issues and even criminal behavior are increased with lead exposure. This would help explain some of the violence of the Romans in the wars of the 20th century. So, for your own health, think twice before firing up your grandpappy's old still you found in the barn. Those soldered joints probably have lead in them, and it does transfer to the distillate. Did you eat a lot of paint chips when you were a kid? <laughs> Why? Alchemical History Evidence of distillation has been found in multiple cultures throughout different times in history. The first evidence of distillation was found in Akkadian tablets in ancient Mesopotamia about 3,225 years ago. It was well known in the Roman era as alchemists working in Alexandria and Roman Egypt in the 1st and 2nd century AD had practiced distilling water and other liquids. However, they had no particular name for it, as the phrase distill came from the Latin phrase a drip. In ancient India and uh, in ancient China, they were making liquor as early as the 1st century using bamboo or terracotta stills. There is also a strong Arabic and Islamic influence in the history of distillation too. In fact, one of the first alchemists to widely use distillation for a variety of substances was Jabir ibn Hayyan around the year 8 or 900 AD. You may have heard the word gibberish. That is because Mr. Jabir, or Jibber, had a tendency to write in indecipherable shorthand. Nevertheless, he laid the foundation for modern chemistry with his works, as have many other alchemists throughout history. As we have spirits in European culture, in the Arabic culture there are jinn, spelled with a J instead of a G, which are said to be beings made of subtle fire. It would certainly seem that rubbing the magic lamp, perhaps with a damp cloth for cooling, would indeed release the genie from the bottle in the form of a vapor condensing to a liquid. So perhaps gin, spelled with a J, is related to the drink G-I-N, spelled with a G, as a spiritual parallel to the physical. Culture, the jinn, are considered beings made of fire in the same way that angels are made of light and humans are made of clay. The jinn are said to have free will and can be either good or evil. It should be noted that the names of chemicals have changed tremendously over the centuries. For example, mercury has the symbol HG, which stands for hydra gyrum or hydra gyrum, hydra meaning water and agyrum meaning silver. So in Latin, this is why we have the symbol for mercury, which literally translates to silver water, and why the symbol for silver is AG for a gyrum. If you were to go back in time to the days of the alchemist, the English they spoke would have hardly been recognizable. Modern day drinking alcohol or ethanol would have likely been referred to as mercury or spirit of the vine. In its highest proof, it was known as the Tears of Diana. In those times, metallic mercury would have been considered a type of the broader principle of mercury, a dissolving fluid, uh, but would have likely been called quicksilver. The term alcohol comes from two Arabic words, al and kahul. The kahul is from an Akkadian uh, word similar to Babylonian or Sumerian, uh, the word gulum, which refers to a solid mineral stibnite, which could be transformed into a powder called antimony trisulfide and was considered the spirit of the mineral, which was used to ward off evil and for cosmetics and antiseptics. This solid substance would have at one time had the name alcohol, but over time the term alcohol became synonymous with any distillation process and eventually became the term ethanol or ethyl alcohol, 
in the 1890s based on the two carbon naming system, uh, the multiple carbon naming system, uh, because it has two carbons in it. It's called ethyl alcohol. The proofing system is another interesting part of history. The proofing of ethyl alcohol, or spirits as they were called, dates back to the 1500s in England when spirits were taxed at different rates based on their flammability, as a highly flammable liquid would put the king's horse-driven carriages at risk. It was the ancient equivalent of hazardous shipping fees. The proofing test was a flammability test which had various forms, uh, such as a simple burn or no burn test, um, and a gunpowder test where gunpowder was uh, black powder, uh, was wetted with spirits and tested for ignition. Since potassium nitrate in the old black powder dissolves with water, a watery beverage like uh, wine would prevent combustion, but a strong liquor would not stop the black powder from igniting. So, uh, 100 proof was historically the flammability point of alcohol. For some time in history, 100 proof was set around 57.15% alcohol content. But eventually, in the mid-1800s in the United States... Uh, we set the proofing system to a more simple double the percentage. So 100 proof alcohol is 50% and 200 proof alcohol is as strong as it can get. 100% pure alcohol with no water. Uh, getting all the water out of a proof uh, above 195 requires more advanced chemistry techniques. So from these humble beginnings, distillation devices have evolved for use with acids, wood gasification, petroleum distillation, fuel production, water desalination, or even the distillation of elemental mercury. Since metallic gold can dissolve in metallic mercury the same way that salt dissolves in water, a mercury distillation device can be used to extract gold and reclaim mercury as a solvent, although this practice could damage the environment. Effects of the Still much was learned about distillation from the moonshine era here in the United States. The moonshine culture has evolved its own language to describe the process, which has no doubt, no doubt helped evolve the science of distillation into the modern petrochemical era. During the course of a distillation process, the temperature will rise as heat is applied to the still. Because of this, different substances come off the still as time goes on, and the boiling points of each material within the still are reached. Substances do not distill at their exact scientific boiling point. The back pressure of the piping, along with the intricate dance between solubility of the chemicals, changes when and at what temperature different chemicals will come off of the still. In the case of a fermented beverage distillation, the first distillate to come off the traditional still is called the four shots. The four shots are considered toxic as they may contain poisonous methanol, which has a lower boiling point than the drinkable ethanol. There have been cases of blindness and death as a result of methanol poisoning. To avoid methanol poisoning, the most important thing for a distiller to understand is that toxicity is proportional to the size of the still. The larger the still is, the more likely you are to get methanol in the four shots. If you distill one bottle of wine, nothing in that one bottle of wine would have existed outside of itself, meaning that if you could drink a bottle of wine, you might get a headache, but that'd be about it. Similarly, the four shots from distilling one bottle of wine might give you a headache, but there would be not enough quantity to hurt you. However, if you were to drink the first few shots from a 1,000 gallon distillation process, those first few shots could kill you or make you go blind. As time goes by, the distillation goes into the heads, where a drinkable form of alcohol starts to come off the still. The next portion is generally considered the best for drinkability, and it is called the hearts. And finally, the last of the distillate to come off the still is called the tails. The tails often have a watery and uh, oily taste and appearance and are uh, less desirable and they create a foggy appearance that would tend to quote shine under the moonlight hence the name moonshine for determining when the distillation process is done regarding the geometry of the still in general a tall vertical height of the distillation head 
will produce a higher proof and cleaner alcohol. Uh, more volume of the distillation head will allow for circulation. And a lower height of the distillation head with a strong decline on the beak will produce more flavor. Uh, another thing to consider is the condensing of the vapors. This is often done with a coil-shaped device called a worm or a heat exchanger, which could be of various designs depending on the chemistry or uh, geometry of the still and the size of the device. But with all these varia uh, variations of alcohol distilling, uh, I will have to leave that up to the licensed professionals. Mission Critical Information Legality you can legally own a still of any size as long as it's not intended for alcohol production. Distilling water, essential oils, or other non-alcoholic liquids is considered a legal use for a still. If you intend to consume or sell distilled spirits, federal law strictly prohibits individuals from producing distilled spirits at home. Federal permitting is regulated by the Alcohol and Tobacco Tax and Trade Bureau. Applying for and receiving a federal certificate of label approval from the Alcohol and Tobacco Tax Trade Bureau is free. However, state licensing is also required. For example, in Texas, it would cost about $3,000 to get a D permit, Distillers and Rectifiers permit, from the Texas Alcoholic Beverage Commission. So, basically, without the proper permits, don't drink or sell or produce any alcohol from your chemistry experiments. Safety. Fire and explosion. Alcohol vapors are flammable and explosive. Using an open flame to distill alcohol presents a fire and explosion risk, which again is proportional to the size of the still. A uh, distillation using an electric heating device is less risky than an open flame. The highest risk would be a double distilling over an open flame with a large still. That is to say, distilling alcohol for a second time alcohol which is already flammable over an open flame in a large quantity. That would be dangerous. Or you would like for me to cover about distillation? Please put it in the comments. Thanks. Have a great day.